Oh, Everybody! My glasses. Uh oh. <laughs> you don't have your glasses? I won't be able to see very well. You better hurry up and go get them. I need my glasses. Do you know where they are? Carrie's gonna go get her glasses. Because let's be honest, I won't be able to see. <laughs> Melody, hello, so good to see you. Always the faithful first on the live stream. I'm here, I'm here. Now I can see. Hi. Hello. People are getting on. Hello, hello. Rhiannon, it's good to see you. Jackie. Don't call her Jackie. You never call her that. <laughs> Mom. Mom and Jackie, they're synonymous. It's like <laughs> God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know. Not really. Oh, and what in the world? Like, they're together, you know? You, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you too, Melody. If you guys want to uh, share this, go ahead and post below to share it. All right. All right, we're excited. So we want to know where you guys have eaten so far. Um, Carrie and I took the boys earlier this week to IHOP. It was the first time that the International House of Pancakes was open for business. So we were one of the first customers on Sunday morning and uh, we uh, went in there and just had a nice pancake breakfast. It was and so nice to sit down. And because we're in different areas in um, California, so we're in phase three now. I think we're sliding into phase three. No, phase two. Phase two? We're not in phase three. Anyway, yeah. where some of the businesses, some of the restaurants are now opening, we're finding that more. So today, we rode by Our Chili's. favorite place? Chili's! Actually, it's Carrie's favorite place. It's not really mine. <laughs> I, <know>. <laughs> I miss buffets. How many of you guys miss buffets? I want to go. There's a sushi buffet in Mission Valley called 100 Seafood and Sushi. It's like our favorite place, and I wanna go so bad, but I'm afraid buffets will be a thing of the past. We're gonna talk about buffet restaurants like we talk about Blockbuster Video. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be like, remember back when we were kids and we used to get a spoon and dish our own food? Shannon said that Wyoming has been open for a few weeks now. That's so nice. I think uh, we'll be one of the last ones to, um, be on the lockdown. Shannon, we, we saw your uh, pictures from Wyoming and Yellowstone, and it's amazing. Yeah. And we, I'm, I'm wanting to take a trip to Wyoming now. We should totally come see. I want to see all the bison. That was, I've never seen Have bison? you ever seen a bison? No. Those are awesome. What a cool place. No sushi. So, Jen said she loves Jen chilies. Loves... Yes. My kind of people. Yeah. The boys, our boys love chilies too. That's awesome. So yeah, we would love, uh, we, we're excited about restaurants opening back up. We're especially excited about churches opening back up this Sunday. I just gotta say, I think it's a coincidence, not really, that um, pastors all over California, I believe we were up to almost 2,000 pastors in California that made a commitment with or without permission to meet on Sunday, May 31st, and lo and behold, our governor, Gavin Newsom, uh, made an uh, announcement that churches were uh, allowed to meet and gave certain guidelines. Yeah. So hopefully there will be a lot of churches meeting this Sunday. We're excited about that opportunity. And Carrie and I will be leading worship at one of our partner churches, the Promise Church with Pastors Henry and Cindy. Cindy. Yes. And we're excited to be up there. We'll be leading worship with their praise team this Sunday. And Multiply Church would be meeting, but our meeting space is a school mm -hmm. and the school is closed. So we are not able to meet. So also open is um, Old Navy and they're saying <laughs> they like your shirt. Thank you. So, my, <laughs> my wife dresses me, so <laughs> everything I wear, all, my pants, I got black <laughs> pants on, every, this, it's all because of her. So I got this for him, I was like, retail therapy, retail <laughs> therapy, it looks so nice on him. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yes. That's nice. So, hey, so we're going to jump right in. He we, folded. <laughs> yeah. I think he's talking he's about, like about our he's governor. He's talking about governor. Our governor. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree, John, I agree. 
So here's what, uh, let's see, what time well, he is he didn't really, I'll have to say, he kind of really didn't have a choice because there, the petition was out there with at least up to 1,200 signatures at the time. Yeah. So it was put on his desk and he had to, he had to do something about it. So it was time for him to yeah. acknowledge that it was an issue. Yeah. So he did. Also, uh, Rian is asking, what time does the service start at the Promise? That is a good question. I'm not, are they doing two services or one? I don't remember. Oh, Jen, were? maybe you know. Jen, if you know, mark it on the comments. Uh, oh, promises. no, they were doing two because one you could sign two. up for the 9 o'clock or you could sign up for the 11 o'clock. You could sign up for either one. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so we want to jump in. This is going to be part two today. And instead of starting with the song, we wanted to just jump right into the content. We had some really good dialogue with some of you. Uh, over the last 24 hours, some people have been sending us messages with questions. Um, I want to be able to clarify a couple of comments that we made yesterday to make sure that um, we're able to give some context scripturally to some of the stances that we, we presented. Um, Tammy, Sam, I have to leave early. No, no problem. No worries, Tammy. We're just glad you're on. Absolutely. Sister Padma's here. And hi, Teresa. Yes. So one of the things that we established when we talked through last night is that God has designed man or humanity. He designed us to partner with him in extending the kingdom of God on the earth. Yeah. That was Adam and Eve's commission. If you talk about the original commission in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter one, Adam and Eve were commissioned by God to multiply and increase throughout the earth. And he created the Garden of Eden as a place for them to, uh, to begin. And what ended up happening is Adam abdicated his dominion that was given to him by God to the enemy, mm -hmm. to Satan, to yeah. the serpent, because they agreed with him and he was given that dominion. And so when we make the statement last night that not everything that happens on the earth is God's will. It's important that we understand, yes, we believe God is sovereign. He is the creator of the universe and he can do whatever he wants. But God himself chose to delegate his authority to his people. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself made, a, like John said, I love that, Jesus' great commission is becomes our, our commission. Yeah. His, Jesus' mission, his mission was to seek and to save. Yes. His mission became our co-mission. We are co-laborers with That's Christ. Right. And Jesus came, uh, and First John says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And he says, I came to do the works of the Father. That's right. And in uh, Acts 10, 38, it talks about how Jesus was anointed by God of the Holy Spirit, and he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Yep. He walked in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus performed no miracles prior to his baptism in the Holy Spirit, and he walked in authority. And Jesus then takes it a step further because it wasn't just, hey, I'm the son of God. I'm going to perform these miracles. He literally said in John chapter 16 that you will do greater things because I'm going to the Father. He told his disciples, we're doing this countdown to the day of Pentecost. This is day six. Pentecost is on uh, Sunday, okay. May 31st. And Jesus said, it's better for you that I, I go to the Father because when I leave, the Holy Spirit comes in my place. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Holy Spirit in you is better than me physically here in person. We literally were just talking about this today yeah. on the phone. I was talking about it with Rhiannon. And Rhiannon, if you remember, we were having this discussion about how Jesus himself said, it's so much better that I go so that the Holy Spirit can come. Yes. And he will do greater, you will do greater things than I. I mean, yes. that's such a bold statement it's for Jesus bold. to say that. And then for us to go, nah, that's not, I don't think that's so true. And what are greater works? And I've, I've seen, I've heard pastors mix that around so many different ways, try to explain it. I like to take the word practical in that particular case. Jesus said, you will do greater works. We would do greater works. I believe that was even fulfilled in the book of Acts where the apostle Peter was able to walk down the street and his shadow was cast on a line of sick people. There was so much anointing in Jerusalem during the early days of the church. There was so much faith for the miraculous that when the apostle Peter walked down the street, 
His shadow would touch a sick person and the instant his shadow touched them, they were healed. Did that ever happen in the ministry of Jesus? No. no. To me, that looks like an example of greater works. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, same thing. You can read, I, I believe it's Acts 18 or 19. The Apostle Paul is going through and there was so much faith for God to do the miraculous. The Apostle Paul would touch a handkerchief, a piece of cloth, like if this jacket was touched by Paul and they would take that cloth and pass it around to the, the believers that were sick. Mm. And anyone who touched that cloth was instantly healed in the name of Jesus. Yep. So what an amazing thing. Greater works literally was confirmed and uh, accomplished in the early days of the church and I believe is still being accomplished today. Mm -hmm. God has called you and me as followers of Jesus to walk in the anointing of the spirit to do greater works than Jesus. And it's it's when we when we ultimately understand that authority and the power that's been relegated to us that we actually will begin to walk in that yes. and begin to seek out that authority and begin to use that and pray for folks yes. and believe for healings and believe for these things. But it's only when we actually walk that out in truth and believe that yeah. that is true. That's so good. And one of the things Anna said, I love this Anna, yeah, is that good. he will guide us into all, all truth. truth. That's and, so good. And we just had that conversation. We were talking to somebody on uh, Facebook messaging. She's uh, struggling with, with some of the things that we're talking through. And um, you know, if you're raised with a church background that God is sovereign over everything and everything that happens is always his will no matter what, um, it's hard to hear a statement like God may not be in control of a specific situation, but he is sovereign over the entire situation. He is in charge, but he gave control and dominion to us. And sometimes we have to pray through that. And we would encourage you not to take anything we say as the gospel truth. But your to truth it out for yourself. Your truth is in this book, and your truth is what the Holy Spirit of truth reveals to you That's in right. the name of Jesus. That's right. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Jesus said he's the comforter and he will teach you and remind you of the things that I taught. That's right. So don't take our word for it. Don't take your pastor's word for it. Learn from them, but get in the word yourself. And we've said that the last couple of nights and I think it's it's important yes. to continue to say that, that it's good that we're all in this, you know, we're, we're start studying and learning all of this together, but you don't take what we say or even what your own pastors say, that we are seeking out truth ourselves by the written word and also from hearing. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. That's so good. So here's what I wanted to talk through. One of the questions that uh, came up in uh, the messages that we were um, processing through over the last day was um, somebody was asking uh, in regards to it being God's will to heal all. And they brought up the instances. There are some instances in the Gospels where Jesus clearly did not heal everyone in a particular area. And um, one of those examples I wanna just bring us to right now so we can talk through this as it relates to God's will to heal. And if it's God's will to heal, which was expressed through the ministry of Jesus, then it's God's will to heal through our ministry as we partner with the Holy Spirit going through life. Yes. So if you have your Bibles, the Gospel of John chapter five, we're gonna be talking about the invalid or the paralyzed man mm -hmm. at the healing of the pool of Bethesda, all right? So let me set up the story real quick. This is in John chapter five. Now there's a man, uh, starts out in verse one. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. And uh, now, <clears throat> now there was in Jerusalem near the sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered f columnades. Mm -hmm. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie around, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, and one who had been there as an invalid for 38 years. Mm -hmm. There's a footnote, if you read, some of you, if you have a study Bible, you'll be able to see that, um, that you'll be able to see that there was uh, an angel of the Lord that would stir the waters. And the first person that would get down into the pool, into the water of the pool of Bethesda, they were healed. 
And this man who has been uh, paralyzed for 38 years was never, never able to get down to the water first. People would be able to get by faster than he could and he would never be able to get healed. Now, an interesting po point about this man, there's no evidence in this story that he had any idea of who Jesus was. So a lot of people say you only receive a miracle from God when you have faith for that miracle to take place. And I agree in many cases, there are times where like the woman with the issue of the blood, she had faith and she reached out and she said, if only I could touch the edge of his garment, I will be healed. Yeah. And she was healed instantly. She had faith. So many people came to Jesus with great faith. Yeah. However, in this story, it's this so guy had zero faith. Yeah. He didn't even know who Jesus was. So Jesus approaches this guy in the story in chapter five. And when Jesus saw him lying there, he learned, which means somebody told him the story, he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. And so Jesus approaches this man. Jesus is the one that made the initial contact with him. And he approached him and he said, do you want to get well? Now that would seem like an odd question to ask. It's an interesting question. Someone who's been paralyzed for 38, for 38. years. Jesus, uh, John says that he healed all who came to him. Maybe he chose the worst case there to show everyone else. Yep. And that's kind of what I, the point that I'm, I'm working toward as well. Because he's saying, uh, the man replies to Jesus and he says, Sir, I have no one to help me. No one helps me into the pool when the water is stirred. And while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Now in this time, this man would lay on a mat and the mat that they laid on was, was part of their bed. It was like a bed roll. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. There was no dialogue with this guy. Jesus didn't introduce himself and go, hey, my name's Jesus. Here's my business card. Um, you know, buy my book on Amazon. He wasn't promoting himself. He had no hidden agenda. He just came to this man <laughs> and he said, get up, pick up your mat and, and walk. walk. And there was faith. Jesus said, my words have spirit and life. And when Jesus spoke those mm -hmm. words, faith from Jesus was imparted to the man. He believed in that moment and he rose and he was able to walk for the first time in 38 years. This is a beautiful story. Now, the question that came up was, what about all the other sick people? There was sick people all around and this is the this is an interesting point that you're going to make. And there were there there were probably dozens, maybe hundreds, I don't yeah. know. There were a lot of sick people, but Jesus approached this one man and asked him if he wanted to be whole, and he healed this one man. Mm -hmm. The context to the story is what was the day? If you read on to the story, this day was a special day for the Jews called the Sabbath. Sabbath. It was the weekly Sabbath. And on the Sabbath, you're not supposed to do any work. One of the rules that Jesus intentionally broke was because the Jews had two sets of laws. There was the written law of Moses, which was in the Torah, and there was the oral law of the Jews, referred to as the Takanot. Mm -hmm. And the, the oral law of the Jews superseded, they thought, was more important because it interpreted the written law of Moses. And so they made up all these bogus laws. The law of Moses over here had 613 laws. The law of uh, the, the oral law of the Jews had hundreds more. And there was so cumbersome, not even the Pharisees could abide by those rules. In this area of the rules, one of them was, you cannot carry your mat on the Sabbath. And Jesus picked one of those rules on purpose to break and it offended the religious leaders because it showed that the, the oral law of the Pharisees had no authority in Israel. And so Jesus told the paralytic, pick up your mat and walk, which was a direct violation to the Sabbath law, not the written law of Moses, but the oral law of the Pharisees. And so as the man picks up his mat and he walks, what ends up happening is here's this man. I'll, I'll just demonstrate it for you. This guy's walking through with his mat and the Pharisees see him. They don't care that this guy has been healed. He's been healed. They're instantly angry. They're angry. Not be that because this guy, I mean, not forget the fact that he's been a paralytic for 38 years. They don't even address that. <laughs> All they care about is you're breaking the law. 
He's holding his mat. You're breaking the law. You're carrying your mat and you're breaking the law. So they go after this guy and they say, who healed you? And this guy doesn't even know who it was. He didn't even know it was Jesus. There was so much tension in that moment. There was this tension that Jesus had to literally leave. There were multiple times in scripture where Jesus had to get out of a situation because the crowd was worked up to such a frenzy that they wanted to take his life. Multiple occasions they wanted to arrest Jesus. On multiple occasions they wanted to kill him, stone him. In Luke chapter four, they tried to take him up to a high cliff and push him off a cliff. So I just wanna challenge you guys, when we preach the gospel, there will be opposition. If it came for Jesus, the son of God, and he preached the gospel with the most purest of intentions, if they came after Jesus and tried to kill him, don't, don't expect it won't happen for, for you. Us. If you're preaching the gospel and you're living the gospel yeah. and you're walking with the revelation of who Christ is in you, there will be opposition. Yeah. And we have to be okay with that because Jesus said it will happen. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus sets the captives free all the time. His heart is for us to be healed and whole. And part of it that we talked about was that it, it wasn't his time. It, it was not his time, his to, time go. Yeah. to go. And he knew that obviously. So he had to get out of there before they came after him. Right. I find that so interesting. Yep. And like John said, you will not find one instance in any of the stories in the gospels where someone came to Jesus for healing and Jesus turned them away. You won't find one story. So there, you can find, like for instance, when uh, in Acts chapter three, where Peter um, told the, the crippled beggar uh, that was at the gate in Jerusalem, he asked for money and he said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give, ri to, I give to you, rise and walk in the name of Jesus. That beggar was at that gate for years and years. It's quite possible that Jesus walked past that man every time that he came into the city of yeah. Jerusalem. But I'm there's sure. no account of that man approaching Jesus asking for healing because everyone who came to Jesus and asked for a miracle, who everyone who came looking for a touch from the Lord, they received instantly it. received it. Yeah. He never turned one person away. And what a beautiful testimony to the heart of God. Yes, that's so incredible. That God's heart he is, is to heal all. That's right. Never once did Jesus turn somebody away. Church, it is God's will to heal all. Now, the follow-up question that we sometimes come up with is, if it's God's will, how come it doesn't always happen? Yeah. And we can jump into some of those pieces, but I want us to wrestle with this fact that God's will is accomplished when we partner with him through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He actually extends the kingdom of God and we advance the kingdom forcefully and violently against the devil. That's right. We talked about these two scriptures, and I'll just repeat them real quick. First Timothy chapter two, verse four. God wants all men to be saved. That word saved is sozo, which can be translated as healed as easily as it can be translated as saved. Mm -hmm. God wants all men to be healed, all men to be saved, and come to a knowledge of truth. Yes. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. God is not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God wants life for everyone. God never intended for death to enter into the equation right. for humanity. Mm -hmm. When he created Adam and Eve, it was with the intent of eternity in mind. That they would live forever. They would live forever. He designed the human body in Adam I think and Eve that is so to cool never that he die. designed them to never die, but it wasn't until sin entered the world that death became this yes. possibility. He said, when you eat from the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. Mm. Death was introduced into the physical human body mm -hmm. the moment that Eve and Adam agreed with Satan. Mm -hmm. Death entered, a spiritual death entered. Adam and Eve still lived for 900 and something years, but death occurred on that day. That's right. But the most beautiful thing, and I want you to study this. If you really want to wrestle through these and study these things, look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 draws this comparison where over here you have what we call the first Adam. The first Adam is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They sinned, and because of one man's sin, death entered the world. The wages of sin is death. But then glory be to God, he brought the second Adam. And the second Adam in Romans chapter five is Jesus Christ. Yes. 
and the second Adam restored everything that was lost when the, the first, first Adam sinned. Mm -hmm. So the, what, what God originally intended for the first Adam that was lost was fully restored in the second Adam when Jesus came. Yes. So if death could reign through one man's sin, how much more could righteousness reign through the, the life of another? Jesus came and walked a sinless life. Yes. His righteousness restored and redeemed everything that the first Adam lost. Yes, and Sister Pavlov. It's not a matter for God to receive healing. Even 10 years, yes. cancer can be healed. Yes, cancer, all of those can be healed. Absolutely. And so we want to uh, we want to just stir faith to believe God for the miraculous. And um, Carrie and I are constantly sharing and swapping stories. <laughs> well, I, was, I didn't know I was helping. I love that. Carrie and I are always swapping stories to talk through and say, what is God doing? We love to share stories and hear what God does. Um, and you know, a lot of times we, we follow people. So like, I, I just got this book. I don't, oh, it's back here. It's over there. Yeah, so I got this book from John G. Lake. I gotta share this one story. So I just recently discovered this guy, John G. Lake. And he was born in 1870. And this guy had this passion for the word of God. And he was radically saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And God began to stir in him a desire to see the miraculous happen through his agreement when he was able to uh, pray for people. And so he and a team of missionaries went into South Africa in the early 1900s. And this was during the height of the bubonic plague. And I share the story because I feel like it's relevant for us in this pandemic with uh, the coronavirus. And it's an interesting testimony that we need to recognize that God is superseding over every virus, over all sickness. Yes. The Bible says that God raised Jesus above all dominion, power, and authority. There is no sickness. There is no disease in heaven. And there is nothing that is elevated above the authority of Jesus. That's right. And so John G. Lake went in with his team of missionaries into South Africa and during this bubonic plague that was taking place, it got so bad, people were dying in their homes and the government was issuing a reward. They were paying people $1,000 each if they would go into the people, the victims' homes and pull out the dead bodies so that they could be buried mm -hmm. in order that they could keep things sanitary in the, in, the, um, uh, in the city. And so his team would go in, but of course they didn't wanna take any payment from the government. So people would be coming in to take out bodies, but the people that were taking out the bodies were getting sick. But John G. Lake and his team of missionaries were just continuing to pull out people. He would run these healing rooms and he would get these people out of their homes and they would not be getting sick. And so a team of doctors came in to find out what's different about this guy, John G. Lake and his team of missionaries in South Africa. What's different about them? Why aren't they getting sick from the bubonic plague when everyone else is? Yes. And so John, with faith stirred in his heart, he challenges the doctors to, to uh, take a test, to do a test. And the bubonic pl plague was so, um, it was so invasive to your physical system. When you died of, of this disease, it created lung, uh, fluid in your lungs to build up. And when the victims would die, this deadly foam would come out of your mouth at the point of death. Mm. And there was saliva and foam that would come out of your mouth. It was a, a horrible scene. And John G. Lake said, take that saliva, the foam that was on their mouths. And he said, if you put it in my hand, you will see that the germs die. And so these doctors were, obviously they were interested in trying this test. So they take, <laughs> they take the foam out of, out of the people's mouths, they place it under a microscope and they see that the germs and the viruses are just alive and violent. They're just trying to, uh, you know, they do what viruses do. And so they said when they ran the test on John G. Lake, they put it in his hand, and as soon as it went on his hand, the germs instantly died. And he explained to the doctors that he lived according to the law of Christ, that Christ has been crucified, he's been buried, and he's been raised to life. And the law of Christ is high and lifted up above every other dominion, virus, disease, injury, everything that occurs. 
And there's just some amazing stories. And I just want to share that as a testimony to stir your faith because yes, we believe uh, in wisdom. Yes, we believe in being safe during any time that there's um, something going on. But we know that there is a realm of faith that God is calling his church to step into. And we've been so stirred in this that we believe the church of Jesus Christ is to be a beacon, a light, a city on a hill. We are the place where the sick come to be healed. We're not a place that we keep the sick outside of our doors and we say, hey, stay home until you feel better and then come in and we'll worship God. That's right. We welcome the sick. And I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to dive into the rabbit holes of, I'm not mm-hmm. condemning any other pastor, but mm-hmm. the church has to become a place where the sick can come and be healed. The sick physically and the sick emotionally in their soul. Yes. Those that are sick and apart and far from God. Jesus came that those who are experiencing death that are being stolen yes. from can have life. That's right. And so we, uh, we've just seen God do so many amazing things. And we mm-hmm. applaud pastors and churches that are contending and standing for faith. Yes. Again, we, we stand for wisdom. We want people to be wise in their approach to all of these uh, things that are going on presently with the coronavirus mm-hmm. and what's taking place. But there has to be something in us because we are believers, because Christ lives in us. There is something in us that says Christ is elevated above all of those That's things. That's right. <clears throat> above all of those things. I love that. That's right. <clears throat> There's some testimony things coming out as we're talking here. Lisa um, said um, she replayed last night, mm-hmm. laid hands on herself, believing for healing, and woke up today with no pain after being in pain all day Tuesday. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Sister Patma says miracles are normal now. They should be normal. Miracles are the normal part of a Christian life. So good. That's so good. I love that, Lisa. Thanks for posting that, Lisa, so so we can all see, so that we can believe too when things like that happen to us, that we can get our healing. Yes. Yes. Amen. And so, guys, just to point out as well, miracles are not just for miracles' sake. God doesn't heal us of our sickness so that we can just be healthy and we can just go about living our lives the way that we always live. Mm. Miracles, the miraculous, the supernatural, signs and wonders are always an invitation by God the Father to enter into relationship. Jesus performed miracles to to express the heart of God and point people to him. That's right. To open an opportunity for relationship with the Father. Yes. I mean, can you imagine the, the, the man that's sitting there for 38 <laughs> years? He's been an invalid all those years. Yeah. And Jesus didn't come up to him asking him, hey, do you want to be saved? Do you want to yeah. Do you want to know me? <laughs> he just wanted to know if the man wanted to be healed. Yeah. And what an opportunity then after that to, if he could have stayed around, <laughs> talk about, <laughs> about coming to a knowledge of who Jesus is. And yeah. that's for us now. I that's mean, so good. Having somebody miraculously healed after laying hands and then saying, hey. I tell you what, it's hard to come back with your theological objections. That's right. When you were a (laughs) paralyzed invalid for 38 years, you couldn't move. And you've just been healed. And you've been healed. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen people that have been in wheelchairs for their entire lives. I, I used There was this one lady at our past church that I prayed for her regularly. I, I just pray, I'm like, God, give me faith to see miracles like that. But there was this one woman who her, her limbs were literally shriveled up. When you don't use your, your muscles for your entire life, you, you lose muscle memory. You lose the function of your limbs. I mean, the miracle that Jesus performed for this man was not just like, hey, you know, I can just start walking. This guy's legs were probably so atrophied from lack of use. There had to be a, a creative miracle of muscles instantly formed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There had to be muscles instantly formed for him to be able to have strength to even stand up, let alone walk. Yeah. I mean, that's so good. That's crazy. Um, so that's a, a great example. And I just, I love sharing through some of these because. Um, I challenge you, go through the scriptures, see if you can find one story where Jesus turned one person away. 
Not a single person that came to Jesus was ever turned away and not healed. Mm -hmm. You might be able to say Jesus was in the vicinity of others that were sick and they did not get healed. But those people in the vicinity of Jesus never came to him for a miracle. Everyone who came to Jesus for a miracle was healed. And of the eight instances in the book of Matthew where there were uh, multiple healings, every disease, four of those you can see where Jesus is in different cities. And it says Jesus healed all. all. I mean, think about that. You're in a city and there's thousands. In the feeding of 5,000, there was 5,000 men and that didn't count women and children. There was most likely closer to 20,000 people in the crowd that day. And Jesus healed all. How many times can you get a crowd of any number of thousands of people? How many cases of sickness would there be in that crowd? That, that, that's, that's everything from I'm in a wheelchair and I can't walk to I need glasses because I don't have 20-20 vision. Mm-hmm. All sickness mm-hmm. was healed. Mm-hmm. Every eye problem, mm-hmm. every foot problem, mm-hmm. sickness, bowel issues. If you had digestion issues, mm-hmm. every sickness, Jesus healed all. So I don't think good. we understand and think through that yeah. very often. Yeah, That's powerful. So we'll close with this. Luke chapter four. I just love going into, uh, yeah, Pastor John says, go in for all, press in for all. And Clarissa said he didn't, he didn't even, even have, have to, to touch him. I love that. I love the miracles where Jesus didn't touch anybody. He just <laughs> spoke and things happened. There's just so much power in just his Woo! words. Just the words, which by the way, is why faith can be transferred on a Facebook live video just yes. like this. And we can say, if you have a sickness, that's right. and somebody might get a word of knowledge, that's right. and if you have faith to receive it, and we have faith, and we release faith in the name of Jesus, you can be healed instantly, yes. because faith transfers through time and space. You can even be watching this video a year from now on YouTube in 2021, and you can still receive a healing. Yeah, we were watching a video not long ago. I don't remember. You probably will remember where, maybe it was Dan Miller. I can't remember. Where he was talking about somebody that was being healed. He was praying for somebody and somebody in the back. Yes. They they said, I received that same, what was it? I received that same, same healing. healing. They were receiving the same healing from that one person being healed. They said, Lord, I, I, I received that as well. And they got their healing as well from that person being mm. healed. And saying, I received that healing for myself too. Yes. Yeah, that's so good. That's true. I mean, when you, you can, you can see if you hear a testimony of God touching someone else and you feel a stirring in your spirit about that, claim it in faith. Claim that for yourself. And say, I I I received that. I received that for me. Yeah. How did you get saved? How did you receive healing? It was a gift. Did you do anything to earn your salvation? No. Salvation came as a gift of faith, a gift of grace. It was a gift of faith through grace, grace through faith. Grace one through of those, faith. Yeah, yeah. And so we receive our salvation the same way we receive our healing. We don't do anything to earn it. We ask God to come. We ask him to uh, reveal his word. Mm-hmm. And we say, God, I thank you. That's right. Because Jesus paid the price for our sickness and disease on the cross. That's good. Jesus paid that. Isaiah 53 says that by his stripes we are healed. Jesus literally purchased our salvation on the cross 2,000 years ago. You can't unpay for something that you already paid for. Yeah. I bought this nasty uh, like chair from Costco years ago. And it's all messed up now and the threading's messed up. If I sat in that chair, it would go... Now, Costco uh, has a really good return policy, but I'm pretty sure if I took that... Not this chair, though. Yeah, not, not the chair I'm in now. <laughs> no, not the chair that you're talking about. Oh, I just that, bought a new chair. The one, yeah, that's, yeah. the one that's messed up. Yes. We're not going to take that one back. But if we buy something and years down the road, we can't go back to that store and say, hey, I, I, I don't want to pay for this anymore. Jesus literally, by his blood, paid for your salvation. He paid for your healing. And he's not going to unpay for that That's thing right. that he purchased. He already did it. He already paid the price for your sickness yes. and your salvation. He's already done it for Rick, for his cancer. Yes. We, we, not his cancer, for cancer. Because yes. we, know, we know about Rick. And he's already done it for Christy. She's having her surgery. Yes. So she's just start listening. Healed. 
We and did this last night. If there's needs, just post them on the for comments. For Clarissa's dad of cancer, he's being yes. healed in the name of Jesus. I just want to do a prayer. Let's just pray right now over a cancer specifically. Yes. And we just bind the spirit of cancer. We rebuke yes. that sickness and disease. All the plans and from any the spiritual enemy attachment behind it, we rebuke you and we bind anyone. it in the name of Jesus. And we pray yes. for a healing. We pray for that healing. We believe that we the thank healing you, is Father, taking that you place bring in every part healing. of the body where there is yes, cancer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that thank you've you already Jesus. paid the price. And that healing is ours in the name Thank of Jesus. You, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. So, guys, we have to be able to take this outside of the four walls of the church. Um, the word of God is so powerful. The word is powerful in our mouths. Mm. Yes. I love the saying that God's word in our mouths is just as powerful as God's word in his mouth. Yes. Because it's his word. So we declare be healed Amen. in the name of Jesus. By his stripes we have been healed. Yes. Amen. Yes. So here's, uh, here's what we're going to end with today. And we're going to go through in Luke chapter 4. Cancel the cancer. Yes, we cancel the cancer in Jesus' name. So in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is announcing his mission mm -hmm. in ministry. So this is when Jesus first came back from being tempted in the desert this is when he came and he's basically announcing his intentions to the world as he's stepping in. And in Luke chapter four, Jesus returned to Galilee. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit led Jesus specifically to Galilee to start his ministry. And he goes into a synagogue, which is a Jewish synagogue mm -hmm. on the Sabbath, which mm -hmm. is on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, Jesus is in the synagogue and he comes up to read a portion of the Torah or not just the Torah, but read a portion of the old prophet in Isaiah. And he reads this portion of scripture that drops everybody's mouths to the floor. Mm -hmm. And he's announcing what his ministry is going to be all about. So he went in, he taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. Verse 16, he went to Nazareth mm -hmm. where he had been brought up. This is in other words, where he had been raised from a small child. And on the Sabbath day, which is a Saturday, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. Mm -hmm. He stood up as he, and he stood up to read the scroll from the prophet Isaiah and was handed, that was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and he picked this specific scripture to read. And it reads this. The spirit of the Lord. Why don't you read that in, in the red letters? Can you read it? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't know through your glasses. I can read. We're praying for healing. <laughs> We're praying for healing on Carrie's eyes in Jesus' name for these glasses. I need help, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you meant. I'm just kidding. Okay. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives yes. and recovering of sight to the blind, yes. to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Woo! That's good. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back. He rolled it up. He said, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. He said, my job is done. That's all I need to read. He gave it back and it says, and he sat down. And he sat down. Can you imagine that walk where Jesus is up on the stage? He reads the scripture. He closes the scroll. It's so good. And just steps off the stage. Here you go. And, just and all up. eyes, I guarantee all eyes were on just Jesus as he's walking by. So and he good. he sits down. And he says, today, this is verse 21. Mm. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Dame. Oh, it's just. So good. It's so good. He declared his mission on that day. And that mission has become our mission. Yes. We do the same thing because the spirit of the Lord is upon you, is upon me yes. to proclaim liberty to the captives. He has anointed you, church, to preach good news to the poor. He has sent you to proclaim freedom to the captives. Mm. He, he has... Pro, he has commissioned you to bring recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, and proclaim the year of the Lord. That's what Jesus declared when he started, and that's what your ministry is today. That's right. That's what we start in. And I love it because when you start preaching the word, you will get opposition. Jesus was preaching in the synagogue, and you can read just a little bit later in that same chapter 4. Mm -hmm. um, this is in verse 33. 
And uh, he's in the synagogue. Jesus is teaching. And a man that is possessed by a demon, which is an evil spirit, cried out at the top of his voice, Ha! He said, ha. My Bible literally says, ha. It says it said, ha. Too. <laughs> ha. Ha. All right, demons yell out, ha. All right, so this demon yells out, ha. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. <laughs> but the next part is just Jesus so good. speaks out and he says, be quiet. <laughs> yes! He commands the demon, be quiet. <laughs> and then he says, come out of him. So then good. the demon threw the man down before all of them, and he came out without injuring the man. All the people were amazed, and they said to each other, what, what is, is this, this? teaching? Mm, so good. With authority and with power, he gives orders to evil spirits, and they come out. And the news about Jesus spread throughout the surrounding area. <laughs> Clarissa says, what, what Bible, Bible is that? <laughs> this is the, it's just the Bible. It's just the NIV. Mine is but the ESV, but they both say They ha. both say ha. So ha is something that <laughs> demons and others say. I don't know, whatever. So. I love it. The important thing is that when we start preaching, it should stir up the realms of darkness. That's right. It stirs it up. Because when we carry the kingdom of God with us, the anointing of the Lord is literally on, on us to bring deliverance to those that are oppressed by darkness. Now, whether a demon is on, in, around, if it's bringing harm, it's our commission mm -hmm. as Christ followers, as spirit-filled believers, mm -hmm. to release freedom for the captives. Amen. We do that through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did that through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he did. Amen. Is that so good? good. Oh, so I'm just all fired up. Like I just, I, I, I don't know how to like land I know, this airplane. Like, how, how, <laughs> how do we do this? Out. <laughs> so I'm going to let my wife talk while I grab my guitar because we're going to do like a little song to close oh, out. Oh, we are going to do a song. Yeah, and I want to pray. Uh, I want to pray just for healing while we do some stuff. And I think so. Our our boys were, I think, were wanting to be a part boys, of Boys, do you want to sing with us? Yeah. Yeah, all right. And they had said earlier that they wanted to be a part of this if we did this part. So that's all right. So we, we want them to be a part of this with us. And that's the we always, we always tell them that they are welcome to be a part of this with us. Here, watch out. I'm going to sit over here. Thank you, Lord. You want to do like uh, Sea of Victory? You guys know that one? They know that song. You know all right, song? we're going to yeah. do that one. So we're going to sing Sea of Victory. And uh, we want to begin to just pray. If, uh, if you need a touch from the Lord, if there's something that you've been believing God for, uh, if you haven't already, mark it in the comments. We want to pray for you during this time. We're going to believe that as we sing, there's just going to be a release. Yeah. That God's presence will come. I don't know. And there might be, uh, <laughs> and there might even be some of you on this live stream, you might get words of knowledge. We believe that the Holy Spirit moves throughout the body of Christ and his gifts are in operation when we allow them to move. Yes. And at Multiply Church, we allow and encourage the gifts of the Spirit to flow. And so if somebody feels like they get a word of knowledge, it might be something as simple as I feel like someone has uh, you know, something in their left shoulder. Put it in the comments. And sometimes just by mentioning that, you're gonna see that people go, oh, that's me, I, I, my shoulder hurts, I didn't even realize, or I forgot. And God's gonna to begin to release that healing. That's right, amen. Thank you, Lord. So I'm gonna put what on... Here, what key do you want to do? You got that? Yeah, I got it right here. All right. Here, we'll do it in... We'll do it in Why does my phone always mess up on this? I'm gonna try it again. There we go. Are you gonna do it in This is really... Uh, no, I did in D. Okay. You know, notice our production value is very low on this, but... We're a family that loves to worship, so we're going to worship together. We'd invite you guys to join in with us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Andrea says Dave's back. Oh, uh, for his back. I think he meant like he's back, like I'll be back, like the Terminator. But you're saying his physical back, his, his like back. you need prayer yes. for his back. His gotcha. Back. Yes. Not, I'll be back. So we're praying, Lord, we release healing just corporately over everyone yes, on this Lord. live stream. Right now, in the name of Jesus, yes, we release Jesus. healing. We release, we release faith. 
Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just sweep through every home right now in Jesus' name. That there would be power for anointing, to see healing, to see salvation, addictions broken in the name of Jesus. Father, we just give you praise today in Jesus' name. Thank you that we have victory in Jesus. Yes, Lord, we just rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. All sickness and disease is defeated. It is under the authority of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The weapon for the form that it won't prosper. When the darkness fails, it won't prevail. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I know serves. Because the God I know <laughs> serves only how to try. Yes, Lord, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. Sing that again. Oh, my. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name. There's power in Jesus, every war, every war he wages, he will. I love this part, yes. I'm not backing down from any giant. Because I know how the story ends. I know how the story ends. Come on, sing it out. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, sing. I'm gonna see a victory. Yes, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it for good. Yes, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Yes, you do. You turn it for good. Hey, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it for good. to praise him right now. We don't have to have an organized time of, of the song. Just lift up your voices and praise to him. Father, we give you glory. We say you are good. You are high and lifted up, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, be lifted high. Be magnified. Be glorified. Pain, healing over neck pain yes, and God. headaches 
and cancer yes, Lord. and flu yes, Jesus. and COVID yes, Jesus. and foot pain. Yes, Lord. Lord, you, you have Jesus. dominion over it. Yes. If anybody's Thank getting a you, word Lord. of knowledge, I would encourage you guys, just minister to one another Amen. on the live stream. If you just have somebody on your heart, just give them a word right now. Thank just write it out Jesus. and say, hey, so-and-so, I just had you on my heart. I wanted to share this. The Holy Spirit told yes, me to say this to yes, you. Yes, yes, Father, we worship you. We thank oh, you, Jesus. You are good, Lord. We honor you, Father. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. You guys know Amazing Love? Let's sing Amazing Love. It goes like this. Amazing Love, how can it be? You know that one? You, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Worship you, Jesus. Lord, you are amazing, Lord. Well, we just bless those that are on this live stream watching now, those that are going to come in afterwards and watch this. Father, we ask that you would reveal truth by your Holy Spirit. Jesus, you said if, if it's better that you go so the Holy Spirit could be with us, would you make that real for us yes, tonight, Jesus. right now, today? As we seek you, would you reveal Jesus in us? Yes, Lord. That we would truly see that Christ in us is the hope of glory. That's right. Our hope, yes. That your anointing is upon each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. That normal Christianity will always include demonstrations of power. That's right. The kingdom of God 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. That's right. So Lord, as we preach your kingdom, as we live your kingdom, and we re represent your kingdom, let it be with power. Yes, Lord. Not any power that we have or that we can muster up, but power from your Holy Spirit. Amen. Just like Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do all of these things, let that be said of us as well. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me yes. to preach the gospel. Amen. And Lord, as we approach this Pentecost Sunday, mm. we ask that there would be a special outpouring of your Spirit, an increase of your anointing, yes, Lord. an increase yes. of hunger. And Lord, for those that are wanting and running after you and hungry for more, that we're hungering and thirsting for your kingdom and your righteousness, would you pour yourself out yes. in such great measure oh, yes, Lord. that we would not even recognize ourselves. Amen. That we would experience such radical transformation. It would be like Peter, yes. who went from a fearful man running away from Jesus during the crucifixion yes. to a bold as lion preacher yes. with a fire in his belly to minister and demonstrate the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you. At whatever Jesus. the cost. So, Lord, let it be said of us mm -hmm. whatever the cost, we follow you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We're not in this as a bless me gospel of what can I get out of it, but we're following you, Jesus, and laying down our lives, taking up our cross to run after you, Jesus. Yes. We lay Jesus. down our lives to pick up yours. That's right. We lay down all our unrighteousness to pick up your yes. righteousness. There's a divine exchange that takes place. Reveal this to us by your spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Did you want to say something, buddy? Pray for yeah, you want to pray? That's yeah. awesome. Go ahead, buddy. Dear Jesus, we thank you. Why don't you, you for lift this. up so they can hear too? Dear Jesus, yes. we thank you for this day. Thank you, and Lord. we thank you that 
we get to come tonight to um, pray for everyone yes. and heal people. Yes. And Lord, it's not us that are doing it. You're praying. Yes. For, we're praying for the people. Yes. You are healing them. Yes. And Jesus. Lord, you are doing you are doing everything for us and you Jesus. are healing everyone in that mm. and yes. they are just going to feel good when they get off this live stream because yes. they will be refreshed mm. tonight and yes. they you, will um they will just feel so good and yes. it's and Lord, we just pray Thank that Jesus. you will um, do more of that in our next live streams. Yes. yes. And Lord, I pray that every live stream we will get one person healed. Thank you, Lord. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, Uriah, do you want to pray? Uh, no, thank you. That's okay. Thank you. That's awesome. okay. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That is so good. Mm. Sister Padma, says, she says, so sweet. Mm. That's awesome. We love that. Hey, so uh, a little change in plans for tomorrow. Um, we are celebrating my birthday this week. I turned 38, and so my family is taking me out to dinner to Benihana. So we will not be doing a live stream at 7.30 tomorrow night. We might try to get on for like maybe midday at lunchtime. Yeah, we might pop on or something. Yeah, so we might do something, something midday. midday. We'll um, see. But it's going to be a little birthday celebration for us, the, the kids and the family. We're, we're going to go out to eat. So we will not be doing a live stream tomorrow <laughs> night. And then Friday night, Carrie and I are leading worship at a homeless shelter. So our live stream will just be live there. streaming the We're service. Stream from there. So we'll set up a phone. Probably Liam will be our camera guy, and uh, we'll just we'll <laughs> just do worship. Yeah. And you can worship with us at the homeless shelter on Friday, and then we'll pick it back up on Saturday. Um, we'll do a live stream Saturday, and we'll do a live stream Sunday on Pentecost Sunday too. <laughs> Lisa so. said, "Happy birthday! I want to be 38. <laughs> you and me both, Lisa." <laughs> uh, <laughs> you turned 28. Clarissa said, "You turned 28." No, yeah. 38. <laughs> so we're that we're gonna miss you guys. Um, we won't see you tomorrow. We'll do a live stream on Friday, like we said, and then Saturday and Sunday we'll go back to kind of our regular routine. We just cannot wait to uh, meet together in person with our Multiply family, but we have really enjoyed doing these live yeah. streams because it's just a unique way for people to connect and uh, interact. And so we love you so much. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. Yes. And uh, we're going to log off. Miss so. LaGreca was on. Yes. Oh, was she? Yeah, it's a nice all right, we love you guys. Say bye-bye. God bless you. Bye.